Okay, here's the original footage, and here's step one, step two, and step three. Look at the difference in that before and after, and now I'm gonna show you how to do it. My name's Steven, and if you love the outdoors and a little bit of tech, have a look around the channel, because I think you'll find at least a couple of videos that you will love. So the pro trick that I'm talking about today is, of course, color grading. It's probably the number one thing that means your drone footage doesn't look as good as it could. You kind of have to think of the footage that comes straight off the drone as the raw materials, the clay, from which you are going to sculpt and mould your final masterpiece, your final completed video. A couple of things before we start. This tutorial is specific to Adobe Premiere Pro, but the basic principles can be used in other video editors as long as they've got the right tools. It will also work with other drones. I use the same technique for the Mini 3 Pro, uh, but today we're gonna to be concentrating on the Avada. For best results, you wanna use the D-Cine Light Profile. It just gives you a bit more color information to work with. I'd also advise using manual exposure if you can, because it avoids those annoying brightness shifts, but if you don't wanna do that, at least maybe underexpose your image slightly, because that will retain more information in the sky. And thanks, of course, to the drone for sponsoring this video. More about them later, but let's jump right in. Okay, here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro with the shot open. If you go up to Window Workspaces Color, that'll get you into the right workspace. Now, as I said, three layers. Let's start with our base style. So we'll increase the saturation. You might not need to do this if you didn't shoot in D-Cine like. Um, I like to increase the shadows a little bit here, bump up the contrast, and I'm gonna warm the shot up with the color temperature. I think that better suits the shot, okay, pretty happy with that as a base style. That's looking good already. Switch it off, switch it on. Now, next thing I wanna do is selectively grade the sky. Before I do that, I'm just gonna rename this one as base, so I don't mix them up. Then I go to the right-hand side here, add the metric color effect, go over to the left, rename that one as sky, and then drag it to the top. It's always important to put the sky layer at the very top. What we need to do here is draw a gradient mask. So we go to the right-hand side and we select the rectangular mask here, drag it up, and then just position the bottom line, decent chunk of the way above the horizon, add a lot of feathering to that, at least 300, maybe three, 400. Put that back up to normal size, and now, we can go in, select sky, and selectively grade the sky. So I'm gonna pull that down, so that pulls down the exposure. Increase the contrast a bit. Let's bump up the saturation there a little bit as well. Before, after, and then selectively with the sky, before, after. So you can see that's a big improvement to the sky already. And the last thing I do is add an area of focus down in the bottom. So we got to add Lumetric Color Effect, right hand side, rename that to Focus. And now what I want to do is draw an oval mask. And this oval mask sort of sits sort of in the bottom of the image, really where I want the viewer's attention to be, because the sky's not hugely interesting in this shot. So I'm going to feather that a lot. And then I'm going to increase exposure a little bit on it, and then increase the contrast and the saturation a little bit. So we switch that off, switch it on, and then let's view the whole shot. Everything off, everything on. And that's pretty much it. If you're in the UK and Ireland and thinking about buying a drone for the very first time, why not consider Drone Shack, your one-stop shop for all things drone and the sponsor for today's video. So thanks very much to the Drone Shack. Highly recommend you go check them out. Independent store, small business, and the level of quality customer service that comes along with that. And that's pretty much it from there. You can tweak, change, and experiment to see what works best for you. There are other advanced things you can do, like color shifts and animated masks. Don't have time to cover them in this video. But just using those basics should give you huge improvements to start with. Now there are also two other big things that you can do that will give you greatly improved footage. One is to use ND filters to get a more natural blur. I might have a video coming about that soon. And the other one is to use the gyro flow technique for a lot more stable footage. And I put a link down in the description to where you can watch a video about how to do that. But that's it for now. Hope you learned something. If you did, you enjoyed the video, hit like, feel free to subscribe, maybe drop a comment and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. And then I, and then the other thing I would also, and then the other thing I would.